Tony D and Little Joan, and this is a screenwriting tip, but it's really more of a writing tip. How to write a book in 11 minutes. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 11, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. I thought I'd just burn through this real quick in a quick video. Maybe you could watch some of my other tip videos. Uh, whether you're writing a uh, book or a screenplay, um, you can apply a lot of these skills to everything. And um, my background, uh, besides doing screenplays and books and comics, is in improv, and I use a lot of those improv skills too. So, here's how to come up with a book and charge forward um, and get... I would think the majority of it done. This would be a fairly short book. I think books should be at around 200 pages or less, maybe 150 to 200, somewhere in that sweet spot. Uh, longer than that, I think it's too much, unless it's like a, a nonfiction book. And less than that, well, that's fine too. But, you know, you might be putting out a, a more of a pamphlet or a, a novella like I do with the Pineys. Anyhow, so uh, first up, Use the three-act structure. Act one, act two, act three. Act one, you introduce the characters and the problem. Uh, act two, you accelerate the problem. You heighten it, as we say in improv. Heighten, heighten, heighten. Uh, and you heighten the character's reaction to that problem, trying to overcome it. And in the third act, you get the climax, uh, where the characters hopefully overcome uh, the problem and then... Um, uh, grow and and change as a result of that and then right at the tag you got the denouement and you sort of wrap everything up in a nice neat bow depending on the kind of book you're writing and, and this can mm, apply to most books I would say most stories so a good way I like to do it is to break it down in terms of pages so let's say you're gonna write about a 180 page book so you got three acts that would be 60 pages a piece now, they're not evenly split. The second act tends to be the biggest act. First and third acts tend to be shorter. Uh, tends to be the second act's the biggest one. The first act is the second biggest one. And the third act tends to be the smallest because that's where all the payoffs happen. So, how do you start that in terms of using improv skills? Well, in improv, what we do is you start a scene by making offers. Uh, so, you have a scene partner and um, you just start with anything so i'm gonna go to um i'm not looking i'm gonna go to well first i gotta get on the tab uh go to youtube uh i'm gonna go to home and i'm gonna look at the let's pick a number the sixth video and i'm gonna i'm gonna use that as the topic for my pitch okay all right so one one two three four five six earwax okay so the suggestion would be earwax in an improv scene. And what would you do with that? Well, you would just make an innocuous statement about earwax. And through the interaction of the two actors, you would discover what the scene is about. And they would make offers back and forth. Now, you don't have a scene partner unless you're also doing improv. Um, but you can imagine what the reaction would be. You can imagine a friend or a family member if you don't have a character particularly in mind. You could just imagine a kind of person reacting. So uh, a, a, an innocuous offer might be something like, man, the earwax, it just keeps coming out of my ear. Now, what would be the most neutral sort of generic response to that might be something like, oh, gross, earwax, don't just pull it out of your ear. <laughs> so now you have a character dynamic that you can build upon. You have a character that is... Uh, doing something kind of gross and you have another character that reacts to that and you have a paradigm that you can now, now you have two characters for your uh, book one is kind of gross one is uh, kind of reactive to that grossness and you come up with scenes like that and dialogue and you just banter them back and forth a little bit and other traits will emerge like that right so in this dynamic you almost have like an Oscar and Felix kind of dynamic sloppy and neat 
but it's more gross and not gross. Um, then uh, you might say, well, wh where the hell's the story? Where are we going with this? Well, you don't necessarily need to go anywhere. What you want to do is just start heightening those traits. So in this story, you have a character that is doing gross things and a, another character that is reacting to those gross things. Now, in an improv scene, it would be very short, Joan. It would be very short, and, um, you know, you would uh, heighten that very quickly, and soon the gross character would be doing incredibly gross things, and the uh, reacting character would be like, My God, stop! Uh, my eyes! Uh, for comedy purposes. But in the case of a book, you may not want to, you know, crank it up that quickly, uh, actually, you don't. You want to sort of crank it up very slowly. And you want to think about different things that gross some people out and don't bother other people. You want to think about all the things in life. Everything you ever imagined. Joan, shut up. Everything you ever imagined that may have grossed you out and that you thought was gross and other things you didn't think were gross that grossed people out. So the other day I was watching Steven Crowder and he has a guy on the show named... Uh, Yakuza, and Yakuza is grossed out by bananas and the fiber and the fibers on bananas, which I just found fascinating, and they did too. So that's another dynamic you can play with, simply because I just saw it on a random podcast, and now I can take that and go, yeah, somebody is really bothered by very little. And he was, and let me tell you, he was grossed out, like he was on the verge of vomiting, grossed out. Um. So, what is the plot? What is the story? Well, in this particular case, after, after going, going through all these gross things, perhaps in your mind, or people who can endure gross things, let's say, you might develop a story in which you have a character who, as it turns out, is incredibly resistant to gross things. Like, almost like a superpower level. Right? And he goes to the doctor and... Uh, Maybe at first, he's he's so grossed out by things, he thinks he's dying. He thinks he's there's something wrong with him. And the doctor tells him, well, no, actually, you're not. You're, you're quite the opposite. Uh, your, your gag reflex is amazingly ver robust. And as the story continues, and this, you know, he might have to face some sort of struggle that is incredibly gross. I, I don't know what that would be. Let's say it's a pandemic. That was something in the news recently. And it turns out he's the only guy who is resistant enough. Maybe he's resistant to disease too, to say, go into the Congo and deal with some new version of Ebola that is so gross and so disgusting. People just vomit in their suit until they choke to death. And But he, he doesn't. He is resistant to it. He hates it, but he's resistant to it. And then his friend is along for the ride, maybe as comic relief, continuing to do gross things. Maybe he even grosses out some of the other doctors. And then the story could be, you know, about how this guy helps save humanity from this new pandemic. And then you might also think of the bigger themes that that dynamic creates. The theme that some people really are resilient and in the case of this character he begins as very reactive thinking he's not but it turns out he is and then initially he's not mentally resilient to the grossness let's say but as the story progresses he realizes he is strong mentally he can overcome this and that's his journey and in the end when he I don't know, finds the magic MacGuffin that saves humanity. Um, you, you have to do the, your own work. I can't I can't come up with it all in 10 minutes. I'm almost done here. Um, you know, that, that would be just something to explore from a mental capacity. So it's all about heightening one particular thing. And you can start your story and not worry about where you're going. Don't worry about it. What you need to worry about is, are you heightening? Are you heightening this concept again and again and again? 
And you have to think about that concept in every way it could possibly apply. In uh, the mental realm, in the physical realm, in the mystical realm, in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm, every possible realm. You have to start doing research about, I don't know, what makes people vomit, let's say, or, or gag or whatever. And um, in doing that process, you will discover things that you never do before and go, huh, that's interesting. How can I work that into my story? Because I need this material to add to what I already have. And you keep adding and adding and exploring. And in, in improv, we call it yes and. So you're yes anding. You're not denying what's gone before, but you're clarifying and changing things until you discover the finale, the conclusion of your story. So that's what I often do when I write a book. I, I, I go forward like that with some basic com comments, some basic, not comments, ba basic concepts. And I just heighten them and heighten them. Jones throwing me off a little bit, sorry. I heighten and heighten them. I also have particular realms I go into, obviously South Jersey folklore. And, um, you know, I keep heightening and I keep you know, right now I'm doing research on pirates. I'm doing a lot of pirate stuff uh, for book 13. Uh, there's not going to be a ton of pirates in it, but some. And uh, <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm, I'm not only exploring the historical pirates, but the concept of piracy. Who are these pirates? Why do they do what they do? And how can I weave that in the story, in the concepts that I've already established, in the themes I've already established that I'm heightening and heightening? It's about hunting in the Pineys, in case you don't know. Uh, it's about South Jersey in the Pineys, in case you don't know. And these concepts get heightened constantly in my books. And as the series progresses, they get higher and higher and bigger and better and more clarifying. Everything you do must clarify. Okay? So that's how to write a book. So go write a book. Uh, in the meantime, if uh, you can't and you're bored, come on over to our live stream we do it Sundays at 7. I'll be talking about movies, as always. But we can talk about whatever you want. If you if you dip into the live stream and uh, uh, do a comment, I'll probably read it, unless we've got hundreds of people. That would be nice. Hundreds of people in my live stream. So join us. Otherwise, we'll see you in another video. Thanks for tuning in. Check out my other tips, and we'll see you in the next one.